Cinder is the OpenStack block storage service. On Tuesday, I spoke with Jay Bryant, who is currently serving as PTL of the Cinder project. Good morning. Let's start with an introduction. Tell us who you are and uh, what projects you work on. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Jay Bryant, and I am the Cinder uh, PTL with OpenStack. Um, and so I decided to share what we did during uh, during the Queen's release here with you and what we'll be planning to do in, in Rocky, hopefully. Well, great. Well, let's get started with Queen's then. Yeah. Uh, tell us what, what major things your users should be interested in. Yeah, so um, this was kind of fun as I was prepping for this. It's like, okay, um, everybody was talking about multi-attach. Uh, that was our big thing, but I'll, I'll get to that here in a minute. I wanted the to kind Nova of... The team already talked about that this morning. Okay, so... good. Well, I hope I say the same thing you said. <laughs> um, so um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the other things. As I was going through the list, I found, you know, we, we really got a lot done. It seemed like it was a quieter release, but we had some nice new features come in. Yeah, so some of the things I was looking at that we were able to get in during Queen's, um, one of the big work items that we've been working on was getting default policies in code. Um, so, you know, previously users had Etsy, um, had Etsy Cinder policies.json and they need, they, the default settings came out of that and any changes that they need to make uh, were kind of hidden in there. Now the, all the default policies are in the code and so that you only have to have that policy.json file in the case that uh, you want to change from the default. Um, so that makes it a little easier for uh, the end users to be able to manage um, what policies they have configured and, and see what they've changed from the default rather than it being kind of hidden in the, the entire setting file there. So that was one good addition that we were able to get in. Um, also, uh, kind of a, a, a niggling little bug that was out there that we were able to get fixed was around uh, transferring volumes. Um, you could transfer volumes from one user to another, but any snapshots associated with that volume didn't go with it. Um, so if, if the user then tried to delete that volume, but the original owner still had the, the snapshots in place, um, it wouldn't let them do that, and it required them to go back to the original owner to fix that up. So, so that was that's a good change, you know, good uh, user interface kind of update that we got in there. We also now have the ability to create a volume from a backup. Um, I was actually a little surprised when I found out we didn't already have that. So. Um, that's that's a great addition uh, to Cinder so that, you know, you've got your backups. Um, you can take them and then pull them and, and use them to create a volume out of, out of that. So um, that was another good addition that we were able to get in during this release. Another thing that we've been working on, right, we hadn't quite completed this, but we've gotten, uh, you know, a good start on the process, is improving um, the way that, that uh, quotas are handled for each of the, the different um, uh, settings within Cinder. Um, we've had, for instance, the first change that went along with that is not all of the uh, requests to the scheduler, uh, or requests to for storage, for instance, for snapshots um, and that sort of thing went through the scheduler. So it was possible to actually use more storage on your back end um, than, than you actually intended to. Um, so we've added checks now that make sure that creating a snapshot isn't going to go over the available storage that you have set as far as quotas are concerned for that back end. Quotas will always be a place where we need further improvement, but at least here, um, you know, we're going to avoid customers getting into a situation where it's like, well, Cinder thinks I've got 200 gig used, but the back end thinks I've got 350. Why is that? Um, so, you know, really kind of a, a focus on... Um, usability and improvements uh, for, for our end users. And I think that's kind of a state that we're going into right now with Cinder. Um, fewer major enhancements coming into place with uh, more of a focus on, on improving the, the functionality that's there and the usability that's there. So I know we had some other features and fun things that came in that aren't coming um, uh, off the top of my head at the moment. As far as multi-attach is concerned, I mean, three years we've been working on this. Um, I can't say enough thanks to, um, you know, Ilda Kovansha and John Griffith and, you know, everybody on the Nova team that helped make this happen. Um, all the API work that went in on the Cinder side to make it happen. Um, you know, it's one of those things that 
we were all like, I don't know how we're going to make this happen. We got to do it. Um, but the customers have been asking for it. And so, um, really excited to, to finally have that there. Um, I'm not sure if they mentioned, but you know, to, for, since it is a new feature, it is sensitive to, um, code levels. You need to have libvert, um, 3.10, um, in place or, or 3.1 or, or, um, QEMU 2.1 or lower. You need to have either the higher end of libvert or the lower end of, of QEMU in place, um, in order to have it work. And then also that that became available, I believe, with micro version 3.50 on the Cinder side. Um, so for, for the full shared attachment functionality, you have to have your micro version set to at least that level to get it. I'm sure that, that they covered s some more of the technical pieces from a Cinder, uh, a storage user standpoint. What I want to, um, make sure I mention there is that this is not a magic wand for multi-attach. Um, we didn't somehow make it so that shared file systems work for everything. Um, the intention is, and, and we've given the user a bit of a gun, and we're hoping they don't shoot themselves in the foot with it, um, but we're, the, the assumption is that those users that want this do know how kind of how it works. But, um, you know, the intention is to have one read-write with multiple reads in general. That's how we picture it being used. We had a meeting in Australia to talk about it and say, what do you want to do with it? And we got, well, we want multi-attach. And we're like, well, we can't just magically make everything work. Um, but, but so the, the kind of, the, the best we can tell is that's what people are using for, using, wanting it for, and we're hoping to get it out there and then be able to learn further how we can improve it. Um, so if you're going to have more than one it attached to more than one instance read write, you have to have a file system that supports, you know, a clustered file system that supports writing from multiple hosts. Um, if you don't have that, you're you're going to corrupt your data most likely. So so we urge caution there. Read the documents. The documents have all the info that say be careful here. Um, but we're really hoping for the end users that are lo looking to be able to write from one host and read from many. Um, that this will, this will get them started. Support went in um, for LVM um, to do multi-attach. The uh, ZFSA or ZFSSA driver. Um, and then also um, SolidFire got their support for multi-attach in there. Um, anticipate that we'll see more of those coming during the Rocky uh, time frame. So, which leads me into what do we want to do with Rocky? <laughs> Have I anticipated your question? That's right. That's the next question. Um, yeah. So Rocky right now, it's, um, I, I was looking at what we have planned. We don't have a lot on the list yet. Um, hopefully that will change as the week goes forward. Um, and we have more discussion here. Um, Rocky right now, uh, one of the things that we're looking at that I'm kind of excited about is a generic backup driver, um, that Ivan is working on. So, you know, right now we've got a limited number of, of backup hosts that we can use. Um, just, uh, you know, a, a number of drivers from, from like Tivoli and, or, or to Ceph or, or um, something like that. This will make, uh, this make it so that you can take any storage backend you have um, and make it look like a backup driver. So, you know, I've got an extra, you know, Lenovo storage device sitting around, I can hook that up as, you know, a volume backend and then use it to do backups and restores. So I think that'll be a great improvement. Um, we also are, are working on now um, getting consistent way that uh, all drivers report um, how much storage is remaining. Um, there's been inconsistency as to how each of the drivers calculates the remaining free space. So we've put pieces in place in Queens to document of how that should be done. And we're going to be working with the driver developers um, during Rocky to actually get those changes implemented. Um, also hoping to get some improvements in how we handle replication failover. We've got a spec for that and kind of sitting around and hoping we can actually get that um, implemented during this time frame. Um, other words, in Rocky, I'm just kind of looking. We've gone through a bit of a quiet period. 
um, trying to, you know, if people are interested in storage, um, please come, come join us on the OpenStack Cinder channel. Uh, join our, our weekly meetings, which are, I should you know the UTC time, but it's, um, you know, it's oh, uh, 10 a.m. Central. Um, come join us and ask how you can get involved. Um, we're looking for reviewers, we're looking for developers. There are plenty of bugs out there that need attention. And um, also help, we're, I'm working with the Upstream Institute to work on getting um, you know, better onboarding documentation. Um, so I've got a couple of people who are new going through that with Cinder. Um, more eyes on it to help us improve our documentation and how we can bring new people on would be appreciated too in the Rocky time frame. That's one of my goals is to make a nice landing page for new people who are coming in to be able to see, okay, how do I get started with this project? And that covers my third question as well. So, yeah. you know, where people can get plugged in. Yeah, yeah, so uh, OpenStack Cinder channel, um, our, our wiki's out there uh, with links to our meeting information. And we also have a YouTube channel that's linked from our wiki uh, where we keep recordings of, you know, good information um, of the PTGs and that sort of thing. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. And good luck in your meetings this week. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure.